But troubleshooting tool changers is tricky, and I usually would recommend replace both of the switches, whether it's both the switches and the umbrella, both the switches and the head. If they're old, they're, they're rolled out. I mean, the little roller I've seen flat, and if it gets in the wrong spot, and then you gotta take the whole head cover off. So my, my usual in field work is replace both switches, the large solenoid, the quick exhaust valve, and the pre-charge valve. Usually I've never seen those fail. Very rarely do I see them fail. It's usually the regulator, or it's just not adjusted correctly, or it's the Humphrey valve. So start with the large valve, the Humphrey valve, setting your pressure correct, the switches, and do a bunch of tool changes with the tool changer head cover off and watching everything function. So if you have a problem and you have an alarm, you can see right where everything stopped. Is it down? Is it up? Is it not releasing fast enough? That's the whole tool changer gamut. Most people who have older machines are really good at fixing their tool changers because they have a lot of machines and they're pretty used to monkeying with them and fixing them. So. If you're that guy, you're sharp, you know all this information, you just know what parts you need to buy, you can get back to running. If you're greener, you haven't been around this, you really haven't troubleshot your old Haas machine, I've got a lot of great videos on YouTube. One's called Stop the Banging, How to Set Your Pre-Charge, Troubleshooting Tool, Unclamp Faults Tool, Clamp Faults. The worst is it's Friday afternoon, your tool changer breaks, and you got parts to run all weekend. You know, you're a small time operator, you've got a day job, you gotta get these parts done over the weekend. And I tell people this all the time, you need to make a video just about it. You can on the Haas disconnect the T code from the H code. So you could actually have your program call up a different offset from the tool that's in the spindle. Then you put an MOO in before every tool change and you then have still tool one throughout your whole program but you can change the height offset and then you're manually one person at a time changing the tools all weekend. You can get by doing that if you have to get it out but it sucks if you've got a 20 tool program. But if you've got a few tools and you've got to get these parts out, your tool change is broken, the roller is bad, the solenoid is bad, something's just not working. There's not like a hack. There's not a, if you've got a broken belt, you, good luck sewing the belt back up. You're just going to have to get by until you can get new parts. If you need parts fast and the right parts, we ship parts daily or overnight cutoff is 4 p.m. Pacific time. Give us a call. We'll make sure we can get your parts out the next day and you can get back to running for a lot cheaper than buying the parts from the OEM.